Welcome to this video series. Here we have the 2018 Santa Clara Vanguard Symbol Line. I'm Armin Gaffapur. I'm one of the symbol techs for both the Cadet Corps and the A Corps. This is Andrew. This is his first year in the A Corps. He marched two years in the Cadet Corps. This is Josh. He marched two years in the Cadet Corps. This is his fourth year in the A Corps, and he's our section leader. Next is Orion, who marched two years in the Cadet Corps, and this is his first year in the A Corps. And finally, we have Josh on the end. This is his second year in the A Corps. For over two decades now, we've kept the same approach here at Santa Clara. We play in a very traditional style of established techniques that have served us well over the years. Our general philosophy is we want everything to make sense, to have standardized checkpoints, and to be efficient, logical motion that contributes, whether it's to the technique, whether it's to the sounds, or whether it's to the visuals themselves. Everything is going to be compact, it's going to be sharp, and it's going to be in unison. Everything about cymbal playing here is visual. Whether it's from the simplest bring-ups, to the preps for the crashes and sounds themselves, or the actual complex visuals that we do, everything is about the way we look, the way we're pre presenting ourselves, and the way we're representing Santa Clara. It is a complete package encompassing everything that we do. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about some posture, how we stand here at Santa Clara. Uh, we're gonna start first with our kind of baseline position, which is our set position. So right now we're standing just relaxed, how we would be in between reps. Um, and after that, when either an instructor or a drum major calls them ready to get ready for the next set, then we're gonna go ahead and go to the set position. Set. Now here at the set position, we're gonna have the hands down to the side. We're gonna be thinking about the knot of the strap right along the inseam of our pants. We're gonna have a slight bend in the elbows, making sure the plates are parallel to each other, perpendicular to the ground. And while we're standing here, we're gonna keep the plates on the side. And from here, we're just gonna be thinking about, about posture, thinking about how we're standing. So we're gonna be stacking things from the bottom up, having our heels together at the bottom, toes, apart 45 degree angle and then from there stacking the knees and the hips on top of that in a straight line making sure these are the knees are straight but not locked and then from there we're going to have a straight line tailbone all the way through the spine up through the back of the head making sure that the heads are level eyes are straight forward and we're focused getting ready for the next rep this is our standard position which is the flat position here we're going to be thinking about having the plates centered in your body the space is gonna be right in the middle of your torso. We're gonna have the knots right about sternum level where your rib cage meets. The symbols are gonna be roughly a 45 degree angle, or we can also think about that being from shoulder to hip. The elbows are going to be slightly out. Wanna keep a nice big posture here, looking strong and confident. So not tucked in, but also not unnecessarily bent. We don't wanna be uncomfortable here at all. The hands should be spread so that way we get more control out of the plate. The common tendency is to see people playing like this. So we wanna make sure that the fingers are just naturally spread open, relaxed softly onto the plate, so that way we have control, not exerting extra, any, any extra energy. We also wanna make sure that the wrist is in a straight line, thinking about a, a, a single straight line from your elbow all the way through your middle finger. At this position, we play flat crashes, orchestral crashes that are both hard and soft, and the sizz sound. And we start and end a lot of visuals here, and we also change positions from here at flat. So next we're gonna cover the port position, which is the only other position than flat that we play crashes at. So we're gonna take it up to port right now. Sims, port. Here at the port position, we're gonna have some similarities with flat. We're still gonna be two inches apart, having complete overlap all the way around the symbol. We're gonna have the symbols parallel to each other and perpendicular to the ground. We're gonna be thinking about keeping the knot of the symbols right in between the, the hand. We're gonna be putting the knot right about nose level. And we're gonna be looking straight through the symbols here. Here at the port position, we're gonna have the inches, the symbols two inches apart, and we're gonna have the symbols parallel to each other and perpendicular to the ground. We're still gonna be thinking about having the elbows at a large, confident position, thinking about a diamond shape that we're creating here. 
and we're gonna have the symbols far enough away from the face that if you're wearing a Shaco, an Aussie, or any other sort of hat in your uniform or costume, that you're not gonna be hitting that. So we're gonna be thinking probably about putting about six inches of space in between your face and the symbol itself. The hands should once again be relaxed on the plate, neither open, really tense, or closed down, but just spread, cradling the plate, giving you a lot of control. And we're gonna be thinking again about a straight line from the elbow all the way through the hand. At this position, we'll be playing crashes, orchestral crashes, both hard and soft, and sizz sounds. <laughs> 